Welcome to Leadership Legacy Radio, where, where you inspire you to live your dreams, and encourage you to take massive action, and be your authentic and genuine self. We, we focus on three pillars. That's empowering youth, equipping leaders, and enriching marriages so that you can go out and dominate your space. If you're ready to dominate, you're listening to the right show. This is the Leadership Legacy Radio. Good evening, everyone. Let's see. I'm going to get this right. Right here. Let me know where you're checking in from. Coming to you live from the ND. ND. Right. Let me know where you're checking in from. I always like to know where you guys are checking in from. I'm going to just check to see that we are live on Facebook. Facebook is letting you know that we are live. Perfect. This um, broadcast is being brought to you by Leadership Legacy. Super excited. So, you know, um, there's a lot of things um, that you can do in life. Um, Oftentimes, you know, things that we don't even realize are happening are happening. And um, I used to kind of like get excited when... When I felt like I was growing, oh, thank you for joining us, Sharita. <laughs> and um, one of the things that um, that I had quickly realized is that um, it, the things that you look at and you consistently look at, you sometimes tend not to notice. And so, you know, a great example of this is is your kids. You know, um, oftentimes when you go and visit family after, you know, being gone for a while, you know, people say, oh, my, how the kids have grown or wow, how big, you know, the kids have gotten. Um, oh, my goodness. You know, look at how big they are, you know, in the pictures. And you're thinking to yourself, like, they're not that big, are they? Um, but it's because, you know, you're not paying attention to that. Um, and, you know, if you don't pay attention to certain things, you can uh, miss it and you can miss an opportunity to get something that's going to help you tremendously. Absolutely. And so as you can see, um, we are celebrating 4th of July. Uh, Sharita is all in her festive gear, ready? I am. Uh, rolling. We got Sorry, some guests. I'm late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we won't be before you long. Uh, nope. We do want you guys to enjoy your 4th of July. Have an amazing time. Um, you know, have fun. And uh, please don't be the uh, one person that... Um, comes back to work on Monday with the nickname Lefty, right? We don't want anybody getting in trouble, hurting themselves because of fireworks. So if you're about to start something and it starts with hold my beer, please stop them right there and say, okay, what are you about to do? Like we don't need you break dancing or doing nothing crazy. Yeah. (laughs) Don't say hold my beer and you're about to do fireworks and you're not practicing it appropriately. Mm -hmm. So just make sure that you're safe. Uh, we love Fourth of July. We love any holiday that we can spend with family, spend with friends, and and just kind of like you know get to share you know memories with. And so, you know, like I said, we won't be before you long. So we want to just come in and come out here and talk to you guys about you know um, a, a key component to your success, um, and that is um, personal growth. Um, often not talked about, um, but very critical to uh, your success, which is personal growth. And so, um, you know, today um, I wanted to give you, um, you know, five steps. But before we go over the five steps, what are you doing right now to guarantee your growth? What are you attributing to your growth? So you're probably eating. That's good. Check. Um, You're probably sleeping. Check. Um, And you're probably um, letting life happen to you. Uncheck. Right. So in order to be intentional about your growth, in order to be going in the direction that you want to want to go, you need to be strategic. All right. So um, so my question to you tonight is, what are you doing to guarantee your growth? So there's something that I learned from my mentor um, uh, a few years ago, and it was that um, any opportunity that I had, I needed to be taking in three books. And so what I would do is. I have three books that I always carry around with me, and and now I've even taken it up a notch. I take two books with me, and then I always have one on audio. And and the reason for that is any opportunity that I have where I'm not physically 
like working or doing something, I'm ingesting something. I want to be taking in some material. So I'm either listening to a book or reading a book. So right now, um, the three books that I'm listening to or, or reading, um, I just finished listening to um, How to Win Friends and Influence People in a Digital Age by uh, Dale Carnegie. Um, I, I'm reading The Fatherhood Principle by Dr. Um, uh, Miles Monroe. And I'm also reading The 4-Hour Work Week um, by Tim Ferriss. So um, I, I read three books. And the three books, um, what they are is essentially um, you basically uh, being intentional about personal growth, professional growth, and then something just fun, right? So the personal one is I, I'm always trying to become a better father, a better husband. And so um, that was a book that I actually got for Father's Day from Sharita, and it's The Fatherhood Principle. The one for professional growth is, is the one by Tim Ferriss, and that's called the four uh, the four hour work week. It's basically just how to you know um, how to basically take the the Pareto principle and apply it to your life times ten. So basically, um, taking twenty percent of your effort and getting eighty percent of the return. That's exactly what you want to do. You want to maximize your effort. So if you can do two things in your life and get eighty percent return. That's brilliant. That's what you want to do. So I'm, I'm reading that book right now. And the book for fun was just How to Win uh, Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. And I, I was listening to that book. And one thing that I would, I would, I would challenge you guys is to maximize your idle time. And, and this is, this is something that I have, you know, tried to help people, you know, kind of like just apply to themselves and to their life. Um, and what I mean by idle time is oftentimes you're doing certain things that, we do on automatic. It doesn't need your 100% attention. Um, you can clean, do it without thinking. You can do it without thinking, right? Um, and it comes secondary to you. So, you know, um, working out, you know, cleaning the house, folding laundry, folding laundry, cooking, doing the dishes, driving. Like these things don't do, require a thousand percent of your attention. Now, you do want to be, you know, focused on those things, which you can, but you can also be putting in great information. So that's a great time to have an audio book. So anytime, you know, if you're interested in like learning more about the Bible, that's a great time to just put on an audio Bible. That's a great time to listen to a book that you've been interested in or to learn something that you've been trying to learn. So those are great ways to maximize your idle time. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's so uh, easy to absorb a lot of that um, information and the things that you want to learn while you're listening to things and doing other things at the same time. I know for me, I'm an audio um, learner, so I can read something and have to read it over and over again, but I can listen to it one time and then I can repeat it, easily repeat it back to you. So that was something that I learned later on in my life was that I was an audio learner. So, you know, don't feel like, you know, if you don't, if you're not able to sit there and, you know, read an entire book and, you know, 10, 15 days that, that you're a failure, that you're a failure. Yeah. Right. Like you can still, I can, I can get the same kind of material and information and content that Christian does or somebody that's more of a visual learner or, you know, likes to open up a book and, you know, and read, I can get the same kind of content, have just as much, if not more, you know, knowledge about that subject than that person does simply by listening to it because I'm an audio learner. So definitely find out what, um, you know, what your learning style is. And That's a great is. point. Yep. Right, so, so everybody is one of three types of learners. So you're either kinetic, which is basically a hands-on learner. You like to just interact. You, you're, uh, we like to call like, so we know our kids. So Jalen is a tinker. Right. Uh, and not a thinker mentally, but a tinker. He likes to use, you know, things with his hands. Anytime we would get him toys as a kid, he would try to like, you know, break them apart and put them back together or love Legos, love building. So, uh, but he's a kinetic learner. He learns really well, um, in an environment where he's able to apply what you're teaching him. Um, so sometimes, you know, some kids can struggle because that's the type of learner that they are. And if you don't know that as a teacher and you don't know that as, as a person, then you may struggle with connecting with that individual. Or just feel like you're a failure. Oh, feel like you're a failure because, because, yeah, because because you're struggling. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other type of learner, which Sharita just talked about is an audio learner. You do good with listening. You do good with hearing anything that you hear. You can kind of repeat or retain. Um, and then, um, you have your visual learners. So your visual learners are basically just that they see things and they can kind of like 
duplicate it, emulate it. They don't have to re- really see, like hear about it or do, all they got to do is see it and they can duplicate it. And so what you want to do is be able to apply all three types of learning style to your life. Yep. Um, because not all the time are you going to be able to, to listen. Um, you know, sometimes, uh, recently I've been watching, um, silent videos and what I'm trying to do is analyze what is being said to, to make sure that I'm reading people's expressions and make sure that I'm understanding the message that's being sent properly. And that's powerful. If you can watch somebody understand what they're trying to say and do it, that's great. All right. So, so we talked about what are you personally doing? What are you trying to do? And what books are you reading? Yeah. Did you have something you want to share? Oh, sure. So, you know, we're talking about personal growth and two quotes that I just wanted to share tonight related to personal growth that really kind of, um, struck home to me and that I I absolutely love and apply to my life are by Jim Rohn. They're both by Jim Rohn. One says, you cannot change your destination overnight, but you can change your direction overnight. So basically it's completely up to you at any point in time. If you want to grow, if you want to change or do better, you can. That That is up to you. You may not get to the ultimate destination. If you want to say, you know, Hey, I want to start um, a healthy lifestyle tomorrow. You can change that direction by changing your eating habits right away. You can Absolutely. do that. You may not get to right your now. ultimate weight. You may not get to your ultimate, you know, physical fitness goals right away, but you will be heading in that direction if you choose to change that direction. If you want to learn, if you want to be better at communicating, if you want to have a better relationship, if you want to learn more about geography, whatever it is, like the way that our society is uh, set up now, geography. you can go to the internet, you can find teachings, you can go to the library, you can get a book and you can learn, you can choose to learn about whatever it is that you, whatever area it is that you want to grow in right away. The second quote is, um, work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Mm. That just... To repeat I, that. Yeah. Work harder. I'll, I'll repeat yeah. that voice yeah. you didn't hear. <laughs> work harder on yourself than you do on your job. That is absolutely vital and important in our, Sorry. um, <laughs> in our everyday life. Like sometimes we will break our backs on a job and work hard for other people and in turn get home and you're burnt out. You don't have enough energy for your family or to do the things that you enjoy or the things that you love. It is so important that you work harder on yourself. It's important no matter what I'm doing, whether I am on a job or just working in my house, that I work hard on myself for my family, for my husband and for my kids so that I can be better for them. I am passionate about the things that I teach my kids, but I can't teach them something. You can't give somebody something that you don't have. You can't teach somebody Mm. something that you don't know. So it's important for you to learn and to grow in order to help other people and ultimately just for yourself in order to be better, right? Absolutely. And you know, what's funny is uh, this morning uh, we we had got up early and I was talking to my neighbor and as we're preparing for the festivities, um, we ha- we were having a conversation and, you know, um, my neighbor is, 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 you know, pretty wise young man. And, you know, as we we're sitting there talking, he had said, you know, one thing that I've learned and he said that he had heard this from, um, you know, somebody that he looks up to and it's the chief master of the Air Force. He had said, um, um, you, you can't give others from an empty cup. And he said, you have to continuously be filled. And really what he was talking about is, you know, um, we can't give others what we don't have. So if you're not growing, you can't help others. The, the more you grow, the better you can equip others. One of my favorite quotes, um, I believe John Maxwell said it, but I think somebody said it before him. It says, the day that you um, stop growing is the day you start dying. And so, you know, we often think that, you know, uh, for me, this was my mindset. The day that I left high school, I was done with school. I was done with learning. I was done with growing. Oh, yeah. I was done. Yep. <laughs> and um, quickly did I realize that if I had kept that mindset, mm-hmm. I would have been in the same position when I left high school. And that's not a good place because I, I wouldn't have had a good job. I wouldn't have um, grown. I wouldn't have traveled the world. I wouldn't have become the man that I am today. I wouldn't have, you know... Um, maybe become a good husband kind of a little bit oh you're an excellent yeah. husband okay too. so um you know but but th- that all comes from growth yeah. you know i i wasn't good when we first got married you know i was mediocre at best 
but it's something that I've grown at. There's something that I've wanted to get better at. There's something that I've continuously tried to get better at. And when it's something that you want to do, you do it. Oftentimes, when you try to push somebody to do something, they, they resist. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes I, I feel like my, my beautiful sister, I feel like the, the bad guy and I feel like the cop. Cause I'm like, quit resisting. And they just keep resisting. I'm like, quit resisting. You gotta learn. You gotta grow. Mm -hmm. Right? So you can't, you can't do that. So here, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna bring this in for a landing. We're gonna give you, um, five key principles to ensure that you're working on growth. All right? So the first one is growth is the only guarantee that tomorrow will be better. All right. So you got to understand that if you grow today, you can make tomorrow better. Mm -hmm. Just like you can change your direction overnight. You can't change the destination, but you can change the direction. Yeah. You can only guarantee tomorrow is better by you growing today. Yeah. All right. The second principle is um, you have to be willing to change to grow because with growth comes change, comes growth, comes commitment. So as you as you continue this growth journey, as you get better, as you seek to, to grow professionally, personally, um, and, and, and do something fun, you know, make sure that you understand that there's going to be a price. So you got to be willing to change to grow. The third point is understanding that you're, you're the greatest separator between people that are successful and the people that aren't is growth. So understand that you are going to separate yourself from people. Not everybody is going to be able to drive this train of life with you. Mm -hmm. So you are going to be a train conductor. And what you're going to see is that not everybody that gets on is going to stay on for all the stops. Mm -hmm. Not everybody that gets on is going to stay the entire journey. Mm -hmm. So somebody may get on for one journey and then get off. And you may have heard this in the past where you, somebody says, you know, there's a time and a season when people come in our lives. Mm -hmm. And that's absolutely true. And that's because as you grow, others may want to grow. But as you grow, others may not want to grow. Mm -hmm. Because we tend to be creatures of habit. We want to be comfortable. We want to just... I, I want life to be easy. I want things to be just, you know, easy going. But when you commit to growth, you get better. The people around you get better and you get um, stronger as you go forward. Um, the, the fourth point is growth takes focus. It takes determination. It takes persistence. And, it, and you need to be strategic. So you need to be able to, to, to see where you're going and be able to know that every time you, you get off track, okay, Hey, what do I need to continue to do to, to grow to that? Whether it's growing into a position, growing into, you know, into your relationship, growing into um, a job, uh, whatever it is, you need to be able to know where you're going so that you have the strategic direction to get there. You know, um, oftentimes it's not black or white, but if you know where you're going, it's easier for you to kind of, you know, course correct and go from there. All right. Um, and then the last thing is um, growing is fun. All right. When you start to grow, um, as we started this journey and we we started to know that, like, this is how we can make a difference in people's lives. That's when it became exciting. Um, but and we shared this quote yesterday. You know, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. You know, just making sure that you understand that, like, grow growing is fun as you get better, as you learn how to interact with people, as you learn how to connect with people. Um, the book that I was listening to today, it talked about like. Understanding that, like, if, if you can take a situation where people, um, it, so one of the things that we do in a society is, uh, we tend to, um, if somebody says something to make us look bad, we tend to try to, um, one up them and make them look bad. And, and what you want to do is you want to change that, right? If somebody tries to make you look bad, allow them to do what they have to do and say, you know what? Um, Put a 10 on their head, like we talked about a few days ago, and just allow them to, to say what they got to say and help them by being better and doing better. I know you didn't mean that. It's OK. You know, tomorrow be a better day. Um, you know, one of the examples that I talked about is this this referee was um, there was this baseball pitcher. He was at, in the midst of um, pitching a perfect game. So a perfect game is going the entire game without the other team scoring, nobody hitting a, um, hitting a ball off, uh, off of you. Um, you striking out most players or having outs. So they don't get on base at all. And what ended up happening is on the last play of the game, it wasn't the last play of the game, but this could have been the last play of the game. The ball gets hit. It gets hit to the first baseman. The first baseman goes over. The pitcher, which is the one that was throwing this perfect game, goes over to the play. 
He catches the ball. He steps on the plate. And then the player steps on the plate. Instead of the referee calling him out, he waves his hand like this and says it's fair. So he cost that guy the perfect game. And this guy could have went down as one of the pitchers to throw a perfect game. Instead of getting upset at the referee for blowing the call, which was obvious, he said, we are all human. It's okay. I thought it was close. I just believe that you would make the right call. I trust the call. He went back, watched the video. It was blatant that he missed the call. And he still gave the referee credit. He said, it's a tough call to make. We are all human. He could have got upset. He could have made that guy look bad. But that takes, that is what it takes to be a growth-minded person. Understanding that we all have faults. We all have shortcomings. But when somebody tries to make you look bad, it's not because they want to. It's because they're struggling with something within. And sometimes it's unintentional. A mistake, that was a mistake. It was a bad play, but he was able to be bigger. And now he's known for one of the, the one of the individuals to to bring respect to the game of baseball where he could have went down as probably one of the 300 people to to throw a perfect game but he brought something more important to baseball because of his character because of his ability to grow he said had it been a few years before he probably would have yelled at the referee at the umpire but that's what it takes so commit today to your personal growth As always, make sure that you are doing something every day to to get better, to do better, and to be better. Uh, We want you guys to go out there, dominate your space, enjoy your 4th of July. Do you have anything for them, sweetheart? I don't. Happy 4th of July. All right. We love you guys. Have a wonderful evening. And God bless.